Like this one, this view blows. <laughs> it's just like a view of a wall. <laughs> Ahoy, salty dogs! Lenscap here. Welcome to the Star Squadron server. This is episode four of season two of uh, Star Squadron. Haha. -ha. <laughs> okay, today uh, I've done some more work on the salty shipyard. We're gonna do a little bit of tour, a uh, little bit of a, of a tour, and then we're gonna uh, do some other stuff. So, <laughs> um, I put some shield blocks. Let's start here. Um, I'm in gravity. I've got gravity! Yes! Oh, look, logic. We're gonna talk about that. Um, I'm in gravity because we're standing on top of a thing. Um, but first, I put some shield blocks on the shipyard arms. Um, I think this is working out okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we're gonna outfit that. Um, I got some shield rechargers, but I ran out of materials, so we're going to have to go mining again. Gosh, I feel like I do so much mining. <laughs> uh, once I've got all the mining out of the way, though, in the early game, you don't really have to mine a whole lot for, like, the mid and late games. Um, so, I feel like uh, we'll probably get everything functional, design our salvager, um, and then maybe go mining again. We might have one more go with the Lancer. Maybe two. <laughs> One more mining run, or maybe two with the Lancer before we retire it. And I do plan on retiring the Lancer once we've got uh, the Salty Shipyard up and running, um, just because it doesn't work with the storage modules, um, and that was the plan. So let me turn my HUD back on. I don't really need it for this, but I'm going to have it on anyway. This is an elevator. Um, we're going to use the elevator, and then we'll... Um, hop out of gravity and take a look at the work I've done. Um, so the elevator takes us down. Um, of course, it is a rail elevator. There are windows. Um, I almost might put the windows closer together. I'm not sure. They're kind of far apart, but it's not a very long elevator, so that's fine. Um, there's a window so we can look out this way. Um, my cons I put a lot of windows in this station. I really like looking out into space and looking out at the station itself from inside the buildings. Um, I'm probably going to spend a lot of my time when I'm in astronaut mode in the building, so I want to be able to see outside of them. Um, I even put windows in weird places sometimes. Like, I don't really plan my windows ahead. Uh, like, um, I'll show you over once we get into that next section there, but... Like this one, this view blows. <laughs> it's just like a view of a wall. <laughs> uh, but some of these views are not too bad. Look, you can see how I lit up the engines in this one. Uh, I just use light blocks uh, behind the glass. Um, it's weird, like, when you look at stuff through glass, sometimes it doesn't render properly. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intended, but um, it seems like stuff doesn't quite render correctly through glass, or, or maybe crystal armor as well. Um, I don't know yet. Um, so anyway, we take this hallway, it goes down and winds around into here. This is the building we built for the last episode, uh, with the view of the shipyards. Um, hopefully you guys remember that. It was, oh look, I never fixed that thing. Um, it was a couple of days ago for me, um, probably a couple of days ago for you guys as well if you're keeping up with the series. Here's one of those windows I was talking about that doesn't really make sense. Uh, this window wraps around the entire building, and this part of it... I built it specifically so you could get a cool view of the shipyard, and now there's just a tunnel in the way. <laughs> I guess it's a tunnel. Is it really a tunnel? Or is it uh, a hallway? I don't know. Something. Uh, it's in the way, whatever it is. <laughs> um, so we might replace these walls with gray hull and put like systems computers and stuff like that in it so it looks a little more animated um that might work um, i might leave some open space just because i like looking at space um i don't know yet definitely this window has to stay and we want it to remain unobstructed so um, we'll do that okay let's go back down this hallway we want to leave the doors closed and by the way how do you like this door um, I notice most people when they do doors like this, they do the glass horizontally, um, but I wanted to be different, so I did vertical glass. I think it works out okay. You can still see what's going on, and uh, it's pretty unobstructed, um, so I like that. Um, there is glass here as well, yep. 
Okay, so we go around this weird snake in hallway, and uh, here's something that I kind of want to ask you guys for your input on. Um, these um, rampy bits, like the places where you go up in the hallways, I don't have lights, uh, which this station is pretty dark anyway, and it's pretty sparse. It's not very well decorated yet. Um, I definitely want to change some colors around and add some color into the walls and the floor and stuff because it's all pretty plain. Uh, but I don't know quite what I want to do with that yet. I figured get the basis, get the basics down, and then we'll we'll worry about decorating with with different colored holes. Um, so I've got lights in all the hallways except for the kind of like this bit, and there's one other bit where they're on an angle like this, and I can't really put the lights in the ceiling. That's how I've got the lights in all the other parts, you know, like this. So I don't really know. Um, this is what we were working on and what we're going to work on today. Um, I've got this giant window here, but if we're going to do the ribbing on the outside, you know, that kind of makes this window a little bit silly. So I don't know what I plan on doing for that. I might, uh, I might not do anything. Maybe we'll do the ribbing, maybe not. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this building is where we're going to put some factory stuff. Um, so I had considered making this maybe like a living quarters. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, but no, it was designed for factory stuff. Uh, I had factory stuff in mind when I put it together. So I think we're going to put factory stuff in here, which is what we're going to work on today. Uh, we need a paint booth. We need a hull forge and just general factories. So, uh, we're going to work on that stuff. Um, here's how I did the doors for this. They're not doors. They're just like openings in the walls. Uh, but that's how we did them. Um, and I think that works out. It gets the point across. Um, I really am glad they added the slabs, and I and I want to take advantage of them as best I can. So um, that's kind of how we're using those. That's to signify that, hey, this area might be a little dangerous. Um, this hallway is just a straight hallway. This goes above where the shipyard is. It's right below us here. Actually, it's right below us here. Um, and then it just goes out right here. You can see that is the outermost piece of ribs, uh, ribbing, whatever we're going to call it. Um, so that is the tour of the inside of the shipyard uh, so far. Um, I plan on having at least one or, let's see, how many more buildings are we going to have? Or rooms, I guess. Uh, areas, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Um, we are going to have a couple more. We need... Um, we need one that is a shipyard controller for the large shipyard, for the main shipyard. That's what this elevator is for. I figured we'd take an elevator and then kind of follow this kind of shape and go across. And I don't know if we want to put the building here in the middle or if we want to put it maybe over on that end. Let's hop out of gravity real quick before I fall off the edge. And I moved my build block down there, so we're going to check that out next. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think. Should that building go here in the middle? I mean, that would make sense. Or off to the edge here kind of makes sense. I Just because I want it asymmetric. Um, so we're going to try and do that. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to do today. Um, so, But uh, we're going to tour all the neat things that I've accomplished first. Um, this is the next thing uh, I want to look at. So this is proof of concept more more so than anything. Um, right here, I was trying to figure out how these things are going to work. So what we've got, imagine that this is an orange um, that pod, uh, cargo pod, and that this is also an orange cargo pod. So the idea is that we undock this one it gets grabbed by something else and goes away to be put into our spaceship or whatever and then this one can move forward and take its place so i was able to accomplish that um this button uh let's look at it so this button is linked to this block when we activate this button it will undock that uh, cargo pod it's you know um so there's that when that happens, this activation rail turns on. Um, it um, will change some rails, um, specifically this rail. And then uh, there is a timer, actually first, there's a timer for four seconds. Uh, well, three and a half seconds, I guess. And then it lets go of this. 
um, and then it takes time for this to move, and it's weird, like, I, I'm gonna have to mess with this in larger scale once we get there, but it seems like the uh, modules will only redock when they're bumped. So I'm not sure how that works. Let's go ahead and activate it. So it's undocked now. That starts to move and pushes it. And then once it hits the rails, it kind of goes off on its merry way. Now we can undock this one as well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. So that's kind of a shame. Um, I thought that it would just automatically attach here after four seconds, but then I guess, you know, what's preventing it from just reattaching here after four seconds? Um, it's got to be bumped. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to accomplish that. Um, I, I didn't test if this, if this part moves and grabs that, if that would work. I'm not sure what has to move. Something's got to move, though, for that to work. So, um, and, uh, but this detector, what it detects is it detects if something is docked here. If something is docked here, then it turns this block sideways so that the next cargo pod to come along stops there. Um, if nothing is docked here, then it allows it to pass through. Um, I'll show you. So if we hop in this one, we can undock it from that rail. And then we'll redock it like to the end here. You can see it goes along, it stops there, and then uh, we can just loop the process, right? So when we hit this, you see it undocks, that deactivates that. Now it's still touching, but it's not technically docked. Um, so that's what allows that to move. And then you see the rail turned. Um, I want to show you this too, because this is something that I found in my testing that isn't inherently obvious. When, if we have an object docked, and let's undock and demonstrate this. So if there's an object docked and the rail underneath it changes, it will not automatically start moving. So what I had to do was take this button and actually link it to these three rails and I don't know if it's necessary that I linked it to all three of them. I didn't test, but I figured better safe than sorry, we'll do behind and in front. Now these two don't change, right? Their orientation is always the same. Um, but I guess it has something to do with updating the block it's touching or something. And that is what allows this pod to move when this middle rail changes. If we deselect these, um, and hopefully this doesn't work because it never worked while I was testing and I, I'd hate to look like a moron or more of one. Um, since we don't have, and it worked, of course it worked. <laughs> it didn't work for me before. I don't know why that is. Um, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I, I found that may, sometimes it doesn't work properly. So if you just have the one rail, um, if you, but if you have all three of them change, quote unquote change, then it works every time consistently. So I just, uh, I just figured better safe than sorry, we'll have them all uh, kind of checked like that. Okay, so that works. Let's hop over here and look at this logic. This is that on a more massive scale. So if you'll notice this logic is this, it's the same. It's almost exactly the same. It's slightly different, but it's almost exactly the same. In fact, here we have a full four seconds instead of three and a half that we have over there. Um, so you can see how this one has changed because we have something docked here. Um, so that one has changed and it kind of repeats. This one um, affects this block and then this one is a little bit different. Um, it affects that block, but the delay chain um, is for a different purpose. And we'll go into the we'll go into that in a moment. Uh, but so that loops, and then we've got three tiers of that. So there's the first three, this one, this one, and this one. And then they'll come in and they'll fill up this row. So here, 
here and here. And then once that one is full, they'll go past and fill up this row. So here, here, and here, and then again to this row. And you can see I had to add these extra little platforms off the end. Um, I just kind of have them supported with the scaffolding. I think it looks okay. It holds it. It works. Um, I just wanted to add some structure a little bit, which uh, I like the way this works. So, um, this, this, this chain, let's talk about this one. So this one, the delay is for something else, like I said. So this gives us still four seconds. And that delay is important because this block is hooked to an AND over here. Um, this AND needs a signal from this delay and from the final delay of this chain. So you can see where I'm getting at here, right? That means if there is nothing here and there is nothing here, then this activates. What does this do? This switches this block. So that way, if there's nothing in these first three, then the fourth container, which is the one that sits here, moves over into the first slot. Um, in that event, then the second one, you know, this one moves up, and this one moves up, and so on and so forth. Um, if all three of these are missing and all three of these are missing, then it takes this one and sends it that way. Um, if all three of these, all three of these, and all three of these are missing, then it takes the one that's here and sends it that way. Um, so as you can see, and actually this is not right. Let me activate this as if something were there. Let it do its thing. And then deactivate it as if nothing is there. Oh no, actually we need to do this. We need to hit that button. No, we need to hit that button. Is that wired up right? Is that backwards? That might be backwards. And if both are on, hit that. Yeah, no, that's right. Oh, okay, okay, no, 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 this is right, this is right, because uh, there is one there, so we don't want it going that way. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got lost on my own logic. That's okay, that happens in Star Made. Um, so I did add an overflow as well. Um, so that's if we don't have enough containers, that's how that works. Now, but what happens if we somehow get more than 12 containers, um, which is the maximum that this system supports? So if we have 12 containers, that's three, 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 and three, then this final trigger activates. If this one is on, then it basically just switches this rail. Um, now if that one is on, then this one will be on. And which will that sh should be... Uh, C. There we go. Okay, that's right. That should be going that way. Okay, but anyway, so if uh, if we get all 12, then these will, you know, of course, if there's something here, then that goes straight past it, and this one as well. Um, then it just basically sends it in a, in a square around this, and it goes perpetually, you know, and doesn't stop. Um, the only way that this system can fail is if we have something like 30 something containers and they get jammed up in this loop like that's just a crazy that's not gonna happen so <laughs> um i also could see a failure point no i don't think this is going to be a failure point i was thinking maybe if this container sticks out too far and gets caught on this one but i think there's enough clearance i'm pretty sure i counted this one two three four one two three four oh there's not enough clearance hmm so we may have to extend this or something well anyway i'll figure that out some other time um let's deactivate this so that our system works properly and but that's the general idea i doubt we'll ever have more than 12 containers so i don't think that's a problem actually it would be a problem once we get to four but whatever we'll cross that bridge when we get to it um, for the rest of the episode, 
And uh, actually, I'm running kind of long. Let me check the time. Oh, wow. Okay, we're already at 19 minutes. Uh, <laughs> so that was a lot of work uh, to explain. Um, but I hope you have a good grasp of the logic that's in place and can, can kind of see the... Uh, the direction that this is going. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of construction with you guys today, but I don't think that's going to be possible just because of time constraints and whatnot. Um, hopefully, I can get another video out very, very soon for you guys that does have some more progress in it. I am uh, I'm rocking out these star-made things right now, so we're going to have to move that line. Um, I'm going to get my work on I guess move that and um, I, I want to move this stuff like I've got a lot of stuff I still want to do so we're gonna have another episode out very very soon um, for this episode though that's the end thank you guys so much for tuning in um, if you like the video leave a like if you think the salty shipyard is coming along let me know um, I think it's coming along um, if you see any thing that's weird with my logic or if you feel like you've got a better way of doing this stuff i'd love to know i'm always open for suggestions tweet at me that's the best way um if you don't follow me on twitter follow me on twitter lens uh my twitter handle is at lenscap underscore um, it's down in the description below um so follow me there um, that's the best way to get updates and uh to know when my videos come out um, if you're not uh um like getting emails and stuff but thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Stay tuned.